are the Generation 1 Prius. If you drove it really hard, little turtles would light up on the dashboard. They probably have a lot less power. And I own one of those cars. Uh, my question is if I buy the Volt and I drive around spiritedly and get a lot of horsepower out of my electric motor, whatever the kilowatts is, 50 or 75 kilowatts, when I get done driving and having a lot of fun like I do with my little Prius and then that little turtle comes on and I don't need power, is that going to happen with this as well? <laughs> is there a light that's going to light up? So sorry, all the fun is over. Is that looking at your design? One would think that might happen. I don't know what your state of charge will get to, but I think on the previous it's about 30% state of charge. I started at 65 or 7. When I get down to 30, I'm all over. Fun zone. What, what is a fun stop? <laughs> <laughs> what? My question is, you know, I kind of see it in the party zone, but no, that's not the case. The, the whole goal here is we're going forward with this, is to make sure that when you're eating or driving, you're not going to get your car out of charge. You can 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 get your car out of charge and the range extender kicks in, that you still have the same performance levels that you had in the fun portion of your ride, the pure electric portion. So, so to simply say, if you have a 50 kilowatt electric motor in this, then your range extension ice would need also that many kilowatts of power to keep it the same performance? Yeah, and then you still just keep the battery pack at 30% and leave it there. Yeah, I, I can guarantee you this vehicle will be a very predictable vehicle in all aspects. But when you talk about 50 kilowatts, the bulk will have 120 kilowatts of peak power, acceleration 0 to 60 in 9 seconds. I think there is a component that some people tend to forget, which is this is not only there to displace petroleum. I think to establish this technology, it is really important that people understand that electric driving, it has also a fun aspect to it. Instantaneous torque, 372 Newton meter. This would be something that people will get into this vehicle and say, oh, I was not aware that this is feasible. It is like diesel engines in Europe. Immediately they have this torque and they make a lot of noise. This will have all the torque and makes no noise. So I mean, this is the kind of excitement we talk about. People will see that electric technology is just a whole different world. And so I call this for myself, this is this fun to eco drive. It is, I think, fun and eco work together in this particular case. And what we will ensure this is to this point, whether you are using your battery or a charge sustaining the vehicle will always have to you always be into the point. My name is George Kalkas. Uh, my wife and I drove in from Chicago. Uh, first of all, I think on behalf of everybody here, I want to thank people who work on this team for doing what you're doing. This is the most exciting car I have ever heard of. And I, I have a question on the rollout. I'm not sure uh, if that's been uh, phased yet. But uh, we have some questions about how many will be available when the car is first uh, produced. And probably everybody here would like to drive one out of the lot on that day. Can anybody um, address that? <laughs> As uh, many of you know, along with the development of the car, there's the business strategy that has to be developed. That's why Ed is with us relative to how important is the ready to market because this will be marketed and introduced in a very different manner. For with many of you have talked a little bit about how ready the electrical infrastructure has to be, education, technical training, our suppliers, etc., etc. Right now we are looking at a number of different alternatives and scenarios. Certainly, as we stand behind the General Motors products, the integrity of this product has to be spot on. And that will pace to a great degree the degree to which we'll accelerate. And you may have heard some different discussions of different potential numbers. I think in time we'll know a clearer and better answer as to the rollout. Now, there will be opportunities that we look at to demonstrate the properties. We haven't developed the specific plans, but I think the very reason we are here is to get input and learn, and I think there will be some ongoing dialogue here going forward. So we, we want to hear a little bit from you 
but some of them will be on the readiness of the technology in the vehicle and our ability to get cycles of learning in so that when it's real production time, the car has ultimate integrity. And I think we may not get many more chances, and that's what General Motors stands for here going forward. So, answer your question another way, George. Uh, we're working on the plans. Many alternatives are being considered. I think that's a subject for future dialogue here going forward. The other thing I would add is, uh, I, I think, well, you've been generating interest, obviously, with the folks you know, on your website. And I think there are a lot of folks who are ready to sign up you know, for the technology, so if we let you know and we'll roll out more information, uh, and we, we get sign-ups and people are interested enough to want to put a deposit down and do a lot of these different things. That's obviously, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. 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 Again, Perfect. Perfect. And, uh, it, but that's going to be, you know, that's obviously a big, big part of it too. And, and uh, if we get that much interest, like we see here, certainly uh, from an even wider audience, it's going to determine the number we build. There's no doubt about it.